Setting the record straight on freedom of speech, that is the talk of tonight's byline. We talk a lot about fundamental issues on this show, about first principles, partly because I think we've lost our way. Canada used to be a freedom-loving country. Now, I'm not sure most people living here know what freedom means. Freedom, the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action. Now, when I say freedom of speech or expression, that means you're not required to say something, but neither are you stopped from saying it. Yet somehow in Canada, we're at the point where an attack on freedom of speech is when I criticize what someone else says, or even worse, question why the government is funding a particular project. Last week, we showed you the music coming from Quebec rapper Manu Militari. Now, he's not a star in the rest of Canada, but he's someone who gets recognition and awards in Quebec. Oh, and he's received close to $110,000 from an organization funded mostly by tax dollars, plus some extorted money the government makes the private radio industry contribute. Now, I, along with several others here at Sun News, questioned why this fellow was getting grants from a government-mandated body especially given his latest efforts, which I think glorifies the Taliban and calls for the killing of Canadian soldiers. Think I'm exaggerating? Take a look at this video and the words to his song. The words and images show attacks on Canadian soldiers. The images are pure Taliban fighters. Ordinary guys don't have RPGs. Sur ma pelle, je me dépêche à faire un trou dans le sol pour y mettre une charge explosive d'engrais agricole. Comme dedans, y'a pas de métal, le piège est indétectable. J'ai juste à effacer mes traces avant de prendre la montagne. La mort est si proche, récite déjà la charada. L'ennemi approche, je reconnais les couleurs du Canada. Comme une centaine de pays, l'adrénaline m'envahit. Dans quelques secondes, ils vont comprendre à quel point j'ai saï la tente. Now, no one forced Manu Military to make that video or that song, as far as I know, and I'm not calling for him to be censored from performing it. I'm simply questioning why we give this creep taxpayers dollars. Online, though, those rushing to his defense claim we are infringing on his free speech. On my Facebook page, one of just many places this debate is taking place, Antoine Ratwa wrote a profanity-laced rant claiming several things. Several things I cannot say on television, and also claimed I didn't understand the song. Try to open your eyes and understand. Oh, and one more thing, liberty of expression. Do you know what it is? Well, I do understand the song, Antoine, but I don't think you understand freedom of expression. On the weekend, blogger Scaramouche had a post about Toronto artist Frankie James. Miss James, who's been on this show, was complaining once again to the media about being censored because Foreign Affairs, the Foreign Affairs Department of the federal government, would not pay for her very political work, which is critical of Canadian environmental policy, to be shown in Europe. She wanted them to pay for it, and she wanted Canadian diplomatic missions in Europe to allow her show to be hosted there. They said no. Imagine that. A government doesn't want to pay for an artist to go on tour throughout Europe using Canadian diplomatic missions to criticize their work. Hmm, the nerve of them. Now, no one stopped Miss James from showing her work. No one made it criminal. There was no attack on her freedom of speech. But there are attacks on freedom of speech in Canada, and it often has to do with an issue known as lawfare, people using the courts to try and silence their critics. That's what the now banished Section 13 of the Canadian Human Rights Act was used for, and unfortunately, that's not the only example. Right now, there's a fundraising drive going on to support people who are being forced through the courts to defend free speech, actual free speech. John Baglow, a former government union executive and an ongoing left-wing activist, sued the website Free Dominion after, well, he was called one of the Taliban's more vocal supporters. This statement wasn't made in isolation and without Baglow present. He was engaged in an online debate about the Afghan war and Omar Khadr, who Baglow considers to be a child soldier. He called the other people names during the course of the debate, but when he was called names, he didn't rebut. He sued. Now the owners of the site, Mark and Connie Fournier, are being, well, they're facing legal costs to bring in experts to defend themselves. Once again, they are the front line in this fight over freedom of speech. In my view, this lawsuit is pure lawfare. This isn't the first time the Fourniers have been sued over what amounts to free speech issues. They recently won another case against serial litigators, and they had to pay for it all themselves. 
Now, this is a case of someone using the law to shut down free speech, to silence others. I don't think Baglow has a case, and I doubt he thinks he has a case. But if you can just keep launching lawsuits, you can cower people into silence. Thankfully, the Fourniers won't be silenced, but they need your help. You may never have heard of them or their site. You may not like Free Dominion. But if you value freedom of speech, I'm asking you to give to their cause. You can find the link on lilyspad.ca. You can find the link on my Facebook page, on Twitter. There's an easy way to give online. It's the same website that raised all that money for the abused bus driver a little while ago. They need $14,000. I know that you can do this. You don't need to give a lot, but if everyone gives a little, then you will be helping stand up for free speech. It's a fundamental freedom right now. Let's keep it that way. And that's the byline. Joining me now to talk more about the issue of freedom of speech, what it is, what it isn't, is Sun News contributor and columnist John Robson. John, we seem lost on, on what should be a very basic concept, don't we? Yeah, and I don't think it's all that hard. In fact, uh, I'm going to quote Thomas Jefferson, in some ways a villainous man, but often a luminous thinker. What he said about religious freedom of speech, he said, it does me no injury for my neighbor to say there are 20 gods or no god. It neither picks my pocket nor breaks my leg. And that is exactly the point. It does not use force or fraud against me. It doesn't use force to break my leg or to steal my wallet. It does not use fraud to cheat me out of it. Therefore, if I don't want to listen to it, I can simply refuse to listen, but I cannot directly go off and stuff something into his mouth, nor can I get the government to silence him. That's freedom of speech means, like everything else, you have this liberty to do what you like, ill-advised, well-advised, ill-mannered, well-mannered, as long as it doesn't use force or fraud. But critically, that means when someone says something you don't like, as long as you don't use force or fraud, you can refuse to listen. You can encourage others to refuse to listen. You can complain to the people who give him a platform and say, don't let this person speak. Don't publish him in your magazine or I won't buy it. Don't let him speak in your theater or I will not come to see other shows in your theater. You have the freedom to object and engage in civil debate, including saying people should avoid this person. And that's all freedom of speech. And as John Stuart Mill said, there are three very good reasons for freedom of speech. First of all, an unpleasant idea might turn out to be true. Mm -hmm. It has happened. Secondly, if you engage in debate with nasty ideas, you tend to refute them. Sunlight destroys evil. Third, even if you know it's a bad idea when you start, and it still is, by arguing against it, you reinvigorate your opinions. So we let people talk, but we do not give them a guaranteed audience and this idea that if you don't give them a subsidy, you know, it, it's bad well, enough. Well, that is picking my pocket. Yeah, that exactly. That is picking it my is. pocket to fund something that I don't like. Yeah, and I have, uh, there's another, Adlai Stevenson, American politician who knew about unpopularity, once said, my definition of a free society is a society where it is safe to be unpopular. And again, no one is suggesting that Manu Militari should not be safe. But then... And a quote Thomas Sowell. He says, too many people, some of them judges, seem to think that freedom of speech means freedom from consequences for what you've said. If you believe that, try insulting your boss when you go to work tomorrow. Better yet, try insulting your spouse before going to bed tonight. You know, if you say something unpopular, rightly unpopular, something obnoxious, something loathsome, something pro-Taliban, people are going to shun you in well, you and, and hope they will in your personal and your commercial life. And hopefully cut off your grant. And this is the really amazing thing. These artists who seem to think if they're not getting a subsidy, they're being censored. And I can't figure out, do they think everybody gets a subsidy? Do they not know anybody who doesn't get a subsidy? Do they think their art is so lousy that without subsidies, there's no way it could be sold? So it really is equivalent to silencing them if you turn off the government tap? That might be the case. John Robson, thanks for dropping by and supporting a fundamental freedom and not claptrap. trap.